There are many reasons to monitor insect abundance, and pheromone traps have been used widely for this purpose. They are baited with a synthetic sex pheromone that mimics the chemicals emitted by a specific species of insect, usually females. As a result, most pheromone traps attract males. Different species have different pheromones. While they are good for determining general population increases or decreases, an alert to the possibility of high numbers being present, they are almost never suitable to indicate when insecticide applications in field crops should be made. This must be done by scouting and the use of economic thresholds. There are many types of pheromone traps available, and consult the manufacturer's website to select the correct type of trap to match the target insect species. Some traps rely on a sticky substance to hold insects until counted. These traps are relatively inexpensive and the sticky part of the trap can often be replaced without the need to replace the entire trap. Some types of traps must be replaced entirely. One big disadvantage of these types of traps is that, especially in windy areas, the sticky surface may be quickly fouled by soil in the air. Other trap types capture the insects in containers of some sort and these are most often used in field crops. The industry standard row crop moth trap is the hard stack trap. It has been shown to work well with many moth species, and it is quite efficient in capturing a relatively high number of moths compared to other container type traps. However, it is expensive to purchase and becoming harder to find as new manufacture. It also stands out visually and it might invite vandalism. Less expensive, yet, is the Heliotis trap, current retail price around $160. It is made of nylon. This trap often works well, but is less efficient than the hardstack trap. It must be replaced every few seasons, while hardstack traps can last for several years. Another type of trap, and the one preferred for routine moth species monitoring on the high plains of Texas is the bucket trap. The current retail price for this one is around 30 bucks, but they can be purchased even cheaper if bought in quantity. The remainder of this video will use bucket traps as examples, but many of the techniques and tips apply to other types of pheromone trap. Bucket traps are available in all green, a white bottom with yellow and green top, and in translucent pr plastic. Our research has shown that the traps with yellow in them attract and kill as many as 50 fold more number of bees, or in other words, 50 times more number of bees than do the green traps without providing any better capture of moths than the green traps. We therefore avoid traps with yellow as a way to preserve pollinators in our system. Bucket traps are essentially closed cylinders with just a small space for the moths to enter. When trapping moths, it is important to kill them fairly quickly before they fly around in the bucket and lose the scales on their wings. This is because the scales are what show the color patterns necessary for identification. And it is very common to have multiple species of moths in the trap. The killing agent used in traps is almost always dichlorwas or Vepona. Purpose med kill strips are available at around 3 to 4 bucks each. These usually remain effective for a month or so before needing to be replaced. If it is critical to kill the moths quickly in order to avoid damaging them, then multiple kill strips can be used. However, a more economical approach is to buy no pest strips at the local home and garden store. These have the same Vepona active ingredient but are much less expensive per trap than the purpose med kill strips. They can easily be cut into one or one and a half inch pieces for each trap. Bucket traps capture rainwater and counting dead and rotting moths is not a pleasant job. Drill four small holes in the bottom of each bucket. This, this will allow rainwater to escape, but it will not affect the capture. 
There are many ways to hang pheromone traps and the correct way depends in part on the location they are deployed at. Bucket traps are most often hung on wire stands inserted into the ground, but they can be hung from almost anything. Hangers can be purchased from trap suppliers or made in the machine shop. They must be robust enough to hold the trap in very high wind and also stiff enough to be inserted a foot or more into dry soil. Bucket traps come with a shoelace-like string to tie them up. And the first thing to do is throw that away. They twist readily in the wind and are prone to breakage and coming untied. Instead, cut a length of about 6 gauge solid copper core electrical wire to, to use in place of the string. These last many many years and also prevent the trap from twisting in the wind. Trap placement can be a complicated thing. For exacting research, check the scientific literature to determine whether optimum trap placement has been worked out for the species you are trapping. But for routine monitoring of population trends, it is usually not necessary to be so perfect, just consistent. Place the trap adjacent to a crop that is attractive to the insect. For example, we capture more full armyworms in traps adjacent to corn than in traps adjacent to cotton. This is because full armyworm greatly prefers to lay eggs in corn than on cotton. Place the traps where the insects are likely to congregate. As a practical matter, it is often helpful to place traps where you have road access. This is because the traps can be checked after a rain when the fields and side roads are too muddy to cross. At present, there are several manufacturers of pheromone lures, with Tracer, Sentry, and Hercon being the most commonly available at online IPM supply houses. Lures are substrates that hold the pheromone chemical, and they are most commonly available as SEPTA, although some time-release technologies do exist. Consult the manufacturer for the right lure to attract the species you want to monitor, and also use the trap type recommended by the manufacturer. Manufacturer's stated replacement interval is usually fine for routine monitoring, but for research we have found that more frequent replacement is advisable. Keep all lures in a freezer until you are ready to use them. This is because they can lose quality over time if left unfrozen. If you are working with lures for more than one species, it is essential that you do not cross-contaminate the lures. This is because contamination might make the lures lose their attractiveness or even make them repellent. Wear gloves and change them between species.